Hey, how's it going? I'm Jay Beershank. This is my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me here. I'm humbled and honored. Today I'm going to do a book review for the book Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I really enjoyed this book. I really, really did. Um, I think that there's a very serious undertone and very serious moral to Pip's journey. Pip is the main character. But overall, it's just a fun story. I mean, like the twists and turns, it's unexpected. It really is. And um, I'm 20, and Pip's journey and the overarching idea behind this book, I think, um, is a pivotal read for someone in their early 20s because it has to do with the dichotomy between a life of humble purity, if you will, to a life of cunning intellectualism or maybe heart-powered living versus mind-powered living. Over here, he, Pip comes from a um, loving household. It's poor, they're very poor, but he has a father figure named Joe who is the embodiment of the Holy Father. What I mean by that is the archetype of like the good king. You know, he takes care of Pip and he encourages him and he empowers him and he's real with him. Um, but he doesn't push and he doesn't, he doesn't harm him in any, in any way. He's just a good father. Uh, but Pip, he, he has great expectations and he receives an opportunity to dabble in this world of intellectualism and material success which he never imagined he could even get when he was over here with his poor family so when this opportunity comes it almost seems like a godsend so he chooses to pursue it which I don't think is unusual because I think if most people got the opportunity they probably would take it and this story puts in your face in a very fun way how the grass is really always greener on the other side. When you're here, you think this is better. When you're here, you remember that what this was like and maybe this is better. And what I mean by that is, um, so he started to realize on his journey, he goes from a small town where he grew up, uh, then he goes to London, and in London he starts school, and he has lots of money, and he's reading, and he's learning, he's becoming more you know, powerful, cunning, witty, intellectual, but he realizes that within that, there is a hardening of his heart. His heart hardens and his mind, his mind, his mind takes control, I suppose. Either way, it's a very interesting story. I would recommend it definitely to someone in their early 20s or maybe even late 20s. I'd recommend it to anyone, but I think it'll have a more profound impact on you if you're younger because it's a it's a struggle, you know. This book was written I think in 1860. It's 2019 now, and I think it's more relevant now than ever before because you know, we can go on the internet and we can see people with bounds of material success at 16, 15, and all they have to do is make music online and we think, oh man, you know, that's, uh, that's what life's about and that's what I should try to be doing and you feel like a failure because maybe you haven't achieved that. Could just be me, but I'm sure that uh, that's not an uncommon theme. And in this book, it really shows you that the most important thing is develop your character and develop your heart and live from the heart and do things that you understand why you're doing them. Don't just chase material success without understanding what that is and why you want it. If you want it because society tells you you want it, when you achieve it, you might realize you never wanted it. And what you had was far more advantageous, wholesome, and prosperous. Pip he realizes that in his journey. He realizes that that Holy Father figure that we talked about, Joe, he basically, Joe embodied the highest ideal possible, I think, for a holistic human being. And Pip, uh, Pip, in the beginning, he resented him and he was embarrassed because he thought that Joe was stupid because he's not well read and he's not, he hasn't been educated in university. And then that, com that completely turns it upside down when he goes and he sees people who are well read and people who are intellectual but lack heart. He realizes that heart is the most important thing. And I think that that's a hard, long journey. And being able to embark on it with Pip through this book 
can shorten the journey for you or at least enlighten you to aspects of the journey that you may not have realized that you were even on. So another thing is Pip comes to this realization around like his mid-twenties. Some people don't come to that realization until they fucking retire. Sorry, excuse my language, until they retire or something along those lines. So yeah, I think the sooner the better. I'd give this book a eight and a half out of ten. Also, Charles Dickens is an amazing writer. His character development and, you know, I've, I've, I've mentioned before that writers from the 18th century, their vocabulary and their critical thinking skills are just on point. And they can describe characters and they can pinpoint those archetypes and pull those heartstrings and open up the soul and peer right into it and pull the characters out of them. And that's so amazing. Um, Charles Dickens is a little bit darker than Dostoevsky. I, 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 I think Dostoevsky is my favorite because he's a more kind of cynical, satirical, realism type guy, but Dickens is pretty dark, but it doesn't make for bad reading whatsoever. I, I love the book and I'd recommend it to you. If you made it through the whole video, I, uh, I really appreciate you and uh, if you end up reading this book because of the video, definitely let me know or if you recommend it to someone in their early 20s because of this video, that'd be great too. And if not, if you just take what I have to give and you know, implement it in some way, shape, or form. Probably can't help it because it's in your subconscious now. <laughs> Peace. Thank you.